So that was all in 2D. The extension of 3D is, is the same, basically. Just now you have a third dimension. And what you end up with is a strain tensor that's got nine components. And here I'm indexing them with 1, 1, 1, 2. But understand that you could also just say that you know, 1, 1 is equal to sigma xx. 1, 2 <coughs> is equal to uh, epsilon, rather, xy. 1, 3, epsilon, xz, and so on. All right? And so what the components actually are, then, Of course, my oh, forget I have to get out of drawing mode. So what the what the components actually are is this guy, and part of the reason for the one half now should be clear because we can write this really compactly. Now we can we can write the expression really compactly. So that for i equal 1, 2, 3, j equal 1, 2, 3, then I can get any of those components. So let's write down any, with this one formula, I can get all of the components. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's, let's choose one and write down what the components would be. So let's choose sigma x, x. Right, so you can say that i is 1, 2, 3, or i is x, y, z. j is 1, 2, 3, j is x, y, z. Okay. So the x, x component, according to this formula, would be 1 half partial u, x partial x plus partial u, x partial x. Right? So then I have 2 partial u, partial x, and then I cancel that with a 1 half, and I get partial u, partial x. Right. And it would be the same for sigma yy or sigma zz, and then all the off-diagonal terms you would get the shear stress. All right. Everybody okay with the mathematical definition of strain? There is a caveat. This is a mathematical definition of small strain. What is the definition of small strain? The magnitude of the gradient of displacement is much, much less than 1. Right. If you have very large deformations, then you have to go to a different formulation that's more complex. That includes nonlinear. You remember those nonlinear terms we canceled out because we made that assumption. We have to leave those around in the what's called finite deformation strain theory. And that's really a graduate course. Okay. So we have a mathematical definition of small strain. Also just want to note that the volumetric strain, which is a scalar, is the trace of the strain tensor. So when we talked about linear algebra, I don't think we talked about the trace. But the trace of any matrix is the sum of the diagonals. Right? And we'll use this notation sometimes. Okay. And we call that the volumetric strain. 